Hey there once again YouTube, how you guys doing today? Happy Memorial Day and I hope you guys had a good one. This is Ben Ferriolo, I'm back. If you haven't already, please check out my website. It can teach you how to find, access, and analyze seismic and GPS data, how to understand the many seismic plots people use to monitor volcanoes and faults, and my website also contains over a thousand plots detailing a great many earthquake swarms and events. You can find a link to it in the description box below right under my email address. In this video, I'm going to briefly talk about the recent steamboat eruption that just occurred some odd hours ago, the recent minor rapid fire earthquake swarm that struck West Thumb Lake just a couple hours ago, and recent uplift or subsidence patterns from both the resurgent domes at Yellowstone Caldera. The live streaming stations that you see here are streaming in real time via the seismic program swarm, directly from the seismic instruments themselves, as of 8.27 p.m. Pacific Time, May 27th, 2019. The three stations at the top are from the Maple Creek area in northwest Yellowstone National Park. The three in the middle are from the Norris Geyser Basin area. And the three at the bottom are from around West Thumb Lake, where this recent earthquake swarm struck. Now, none of these, now notice on these three stations, we do see something is occurring that correlated on all three stations. Notice we see a little bit of something here as well. Little teeny tiny microquakes popping off probably aftershocks from the earthquake swarm. Now none of the earthquakes I'm gonna be talking about in this swarm have been reported yet. It is Memorial Day, so I bet they do have the day off. However, I am going to create the usual analysis page for this earthquake swarm tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that on my website under the seismic events drop down menu, under by location, and on the Yellowstone Super Volcano blog page. I usually can somewhat locate the likely epicenter of earthquake swarms around Yellowstone, but this one is a little more difficult for me than usual. The P waves are a little weird. Regardless, it is possible, according to the P wave arrivals of six surrounding stations, that this is the epicenter of the earthquake swarm. Somewhere in this area, I'm guessing possibly right in this tip right here but it could be in this area as well that's according to the p wave arrivals of six surrounding stations ylt which is located right in this location right here at west thumb lake seems to be the station that saw these events arrive first the first station to detect excuse me to detect the first p wave of any station in the area is called the epoch station well at least that's what i call it although no earthquakes have been reported as of yet they likely will report some of them tomorrow before I get into this earthquake swarm though, let's first talk about Steamboat Geyser. And you can see here on isthisthingon.org slash Yellowstone, we actually see Steamboat Geyser appeared on YNM and YNR. Didn't really do that during the winter, possibly because of the ground being severely frozen, but we see Steamboat did erupt. Let's take a look at that right now. Here we are at the Steamboat Geyser 2019 page on my website under the Seismic Events drop down menu under By Event Steamboat Geyser 2019. Let's scroll down. The most eruption, or excuse me, the most recent eruption is the 18th Steamboat Geyser eruption of 2019. The 50th eruption since it reactivated in early 2018. Can you imagine it has now officially erupted 50 times since it reactivated in early 2018? This eruption seems to be of normal size, not too small, not too big. So do you think that Steamboat Geyser and the Norris Geyser Basin at Yellowstone will remain active indefinitely? That would sure be intriguing. Let me know what you think and feel free to contact me anytime here on YouTube or on my Facebook page or just shoot me an email. In the text for the last eruption, I stated Steamboat would erupt again on May 27, 2019. I was correct once again. It is very easy to predict the exact day that these eruptions occur. Of course, sometimes it does break pattern, but usually erupts once per week. Sometimes right on the dot. Steamboat seems to be keeping its perfect weekly schedule and will likely erupt again on June 3rd, 2019. Stay tuned for more. Here are the seismogram, spectrogram, and spectra plots of today's steamboat geyser eruption. Again, it is the 18th eruption of 2019, the 50th eruption since it reactivated in early 2018, but today's eruption occurred at 2330 UTC, which is when it started, May 27, 2019, which is also 530 p.m. Mountain Time, same date. Again, going up to about 32,000 amplitude count or so, we have seen eruptions go well beyond that, so this definitely is not the largest of 2019, but it still is quite a large eruption. Again, look at the very high frequencies. Usually, Steamboat Geyser does not go below 10 hertz, because usually these are the surface vibrations from the hydrothermal eruption itself, possibly even a little bit of vibrations from the catalyst that it uses to reach the surface. You know what I'm saying? 
Again, you can see high frequencies from 25 hertz all the way to 45 hertz, but the dominant frequency rests between 30 and 35 hertz. Scrolling down, we can see the helicopter for YNM. There's a steamboat eruption right there. And just for shits and giggles, we have the 17th eruption of 2019. Notice it went up, I'm going to say probably 50,000 amplitude count, 58,000. So the last eruption, last time, was a little bit stronger. So let's move on. Here we are again at isthisthingon.org slash Yellowstone. I really wish they would fix YPP and YMS, University of Utah or USGS. If you're listening to this, I doubt you are, but if you are, please fix those two stations. It would be amazing to have those when we have some of those rapid fire swarms, especially the ones that do strike near Shoshone and Lewis Lake. But we do see an earthquake swarm. Let's go to YLT just real fast. We do see an earthquake swarm has popped off. See many, 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 many earthquakes. There are three earthquakes beforehand. I'm not really going to get into those right now. I'm going to focus on the main burst of seismicity that just occurred. What was that? Let's see. I'm going to say maybe three, four hours ago or so. So why don't we go take a look at that in the seismic program swarm right now? All right, here we are in the seismic program swarm. So it looks like the swarm near West Thumb Lake, which occurred, I believe, just to the east of West Thumb Lake, looks like it started at about 034 UTC, May 28, 2019. But again, it's not the 28th yet for American time. Remember, um, UTC, which is also GMT, is ahead of American uh, time zones by like seven hours. And I know it's ahead of Pacific time zone by like seven hours. So that's very interesting. Started right around here. First, let's zoom all the way out. Let's look at the largest event of this earthquake swarm. Let's see, that goes 2,000 amplitude count. Let's see, this is, which is likely this one right here. So I'm going to say probably the largest event of the earthquake swarm was probably a magnitude 1.8, possibly at a moderate depth. I'm going to say uh, moderate, at least for this location. I'm going to say around 4.9 kilometers in depth. Uh, that's what I'm going to say. Eh, actually, no, I'm going to say maybe it's a little more shallow, maybe 3.9 kilometers in depth. But let's go to the spectrogram, shall we? Again, this was the largest event right here. Zooming out, you can tell these are obviously earthquakes, indicative of another minor rapid-fire swarm, which they do pop off every now and then. And on my website, let's go back just real quick. On my website, you can see where I detailed all the, basically all of the rapid-fire energetic swarms around West Thumb and Yellowstone Lakes. If you go to the Seismic Events drop-down menu, go to By Event, and click West Thumb Yellowstone Energetic Swarms. The best swarms on this page are from December 31st, 2018. You can see all of these right down here. Those are the best swarms to look at. But then I also detail some of the smaller rapid fire swarms. Again, this one isn't small, but for the ones that have their own dedicated page, you just click the image. For the ones that are on this page itself, you can see the slideshows right here contains the plots. And then I show you the estimated total earthquake count because usually they are only able to locate a small margin of earthquakes that occur, especially if they're too small or occur, or excuse me, or occur too close to other earthquakes. However, there are some events that should have been reported in some of these swarms, but still, you can see many of the earthquakes. I detail all of them from the year 2014 through 2018 for those entire four years. And by the way, 2018 saw the highest count of rapid fire swarms than any other year for around West Thumb and Yellowstone Lakes. The highest count. Now, why is that? Why is that? I thought that was very weird. But let's go back to the seismic program swarm. And actually, I just downloaded this data. So it's as this data stream is as of 8.35 p.m. Actually, it's 8.39 right now, but it was about four minutes ago or so I downloaded it. As of 8.35 p.m. Pacific Time, May 27, 2019. We don't see much at the end. There were a few more tiny, tiny microquakes right here. Three of them. Actually, it looks like four of them right there. Let's take a look. Yeah, actually, let's see right here. That does look like there was another tiny microquake. Three or four of them. Three or four of them, don't, don't know for sure. Very tiny, though. Very, very tiny. Likely no larger than a magnitude 0 0.5 for that right there. But the largest event of this earthquake swarm, again, right here, is likely going to be a magnitude 1.8, somewhere around 3.9 kilometers in depth, just to the east of West Thumb Lake. When they actually report the largest event of the swarm, we will take a look at that, possibly in the video tomorrow, possibly, and see if my projections were correct, because really, they're wrong a lot, because, you know, I'm not a professional at this stuff, guys. But again, the first earthquake of the swarm started right back here, lonely little earthquake, and then it slowly built, indicative of another rapid-fire earthquake swarm. Let's look at the waveforms just real quick. Look at how close together these events are, guys. Look at that. Let's keep going forward. Very energetic. Although they are small, they are very energetic, especially this right here. Look at this. 
multiple, multiple events. Look at that. Let's see. One, two, three, maybe even four. You can see completely separate um, events of energy. You can see that right there. The separate events. But let's take just a really quick count. Actually, I forgot to look at these. Let's go back to the spectrogram. Very interesting. We see more earthquakes, more earthquakes, some more aftershocks from the main uh, earthquake swarm. Right there. Let's see. We got a few more earthquakes. Look at this weird puppy dog right here. Look at this. This looks emergent. Look at this. Very interesting. Look at that. That's emergent. That could be some type of hydrothermal tremor. Maybe. Do not hold me accountable to that. I could be wrong. But I do believe a lot of the rapid fire minor to moderate earthquake swarms are related to hydrothermal activity deep underground. Well, not deep, but somewhat deep, you know, around three kilometers or so. Sometimes it can get deeper or a little bit sh more shallow. But then again, we do see another rapid fire earthquake swarm at Yellowstone. Very interesting, guys. Keep going forward. Only little teeny tiny earthquakes popping off after the main burst of the earthquake swarm. And then it is pretty calm for a while. Just one earthquake right there. And then we see, again, three earthquakes right here. And again, as of the most recent data, we see pretty much nothing. So it is possible this could be a precursor to another swarm because we have seen that many times where there have been small bursts of seismicity and then a larger swarm follows 6 to 12 hours later. But that doesn't happen all the time. That actually does not happen all the time. So you can also, again, go to my website, the uh, Rapid Fire Earthquake Swarm page, the West Thumb Yellowstone Energetic Swarm page. Check that out if you want. Look at the past earthquake swarms, compare them to this. Comparatively, this is a very minor, very minor Rapid Fire Swarm. But you never know. It could grow into something bigger. But again, here is the main burst of seismicity. Just for the main burst of seismicity. I'm not talking about the whole swarm. Because you remember, the swarm ended right about here, if there's no more. But for the main burst of seismicity, let's count how many earthquakes there are. Just a rough, very rough count. One, two, let's see, possibly three, four, five, six, and say seven, eight eight maybe nine i'm just gonna say eight but again i'm gonna do more accurate count tomorrow nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen possibly fifteen sixteen possibly seventeen afterwards eighteen nineteen twenty so just for the main burst in seismicity itself there seem to be no more than twenty events no more but then again, I'm going to do a more accurate representation of the actual amount of earthquakes tomorrow. Not the locatable earthquakes. Remember, there are many earthquakes that cannot be located. Some should be, though. I, I do have to say some of them should be. But then again, I'm more interested in the total amount of earthquakes within any given swarm. And when you see bursts of seismicity like this where they are not super separated, but they are very close together, it is likely it is occurring in a small patch of land, right? Like, it's not a coincidence. They wouldn't be popping off the, over the entire park. You know what I'm trying to say? So now that we actually... Sorry, guys. I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Let's go to the spectral plot. Just see what the dominant frequencies are of the largest earthquake in this swarm. Some low frequencies, guys. But then again, YLT does see some lower frequencies than the other stations in the area. For example, let's see... Let's say an earthquake swarm appeared on YLT first, but then showed up on the other stations like YDDB, Borehole 944... Even though YLT saw the events right first, it sometimes sees lower frequencies than the other stations. That is opposite of what we should see. So that should show us that it could be just how this station works. But then again, this is not a low frequency earthquake. I mean, if these frequencies are accurate for how this earthquake is being represented, then barely, barely low frequency earthquake because there are some somewhat strong frequencies going past 10 hertz. And that's the threshold right there. If it goes past 10 hertz, it's likely not a low-frequency earthquake. But then again, you never know. So, you never know. But we do see some lower frequencies in that. So, uh, I will do more accurate representation of these earthquakes tomorrow on my earthquake analysis page that I will post. And I'll post on Facebook and on a YouTube post when I'm done with that. So, you guys will know when I'm done with that. But right now, let's move on just real quick. Let's add something. Let's take a look at recent uplift subsidence patterns for both resurgent domes at Yellowstone Caldera just to see if subsidence is still occurring or not. Now here we are in Microsoft Excel with GPS deformation data taken from station OFW2, UNR NA12. Station OFW2 resides on the Mallard Lake resurgent dome right near Old Faithful Geyser in the Upper Geyser Basin. 
Again, from UNR and A12, motion of the North American plate has been removed. We do see it is from September 1st, 2018, all the way to May, what is that? May 24th, 2019. I don't know why they haven't had it for the past few days. Past few days, they have not taken any defamation, uh, they have not plotted anything since the 24th, which is a couple days ago. Hopefully they get that fixed. Hopefully it's back up and running soon. But we can still see and get a good idea of how uplift or subsidence is currently occurring at the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome since September 1st, 2018. Looks like subsidence continues, but then it seems to have leveled out right around this location right here. And as of the most recent data, again, we see subsidence right here. But the most recent data, I'm going to say possibly the past week or two, Maybe, maybe even a little more than that, but possibly the past week or two, it seems to be rising. Notice how it was going down right here. And if the subsidence was still continuing, then we would see it continue down this way, possibly even leveling out. But we see some data points going all the way up here. They are not higher than these, though. But the thing is, is they are there are many more data points rising than they were pretty much any other time in this plot. I'm not saying uplift really is occurring yet. But it does seem like subsidence has stopped. It could start again. I'm not saying for sure. Remember, in my past one monthly updates, I have said that I personally believe in the next two years, we will see another round of caldera wide uplift for both the resurgent domes and basically the whole caldera. Kind of like what we've seen twice before since the 2000s. So it's very interesting. I'm not saying, again, uplift is occurring right now, but it is possible. It is looking like we could be going back to another uplift pattern, but then again, it's way too early to tell. So again, this was at the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome. See a little bump right there. But then again, we'll take a look at it in the monthly update and the monthly updates after that. Now let's take a look at the recent uplift subsidence patterns for the same time frame, but up near Yellowstone Lake, right for, uh, what is it, Station WLWY which is on the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome, right on the eastern edge of it, I believe, or it's right on top of it, but it's at the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome, which is north of Yellowstone Lake. And just for your reference, here are where the two Resurgent Domes at Yellowstone Baldera are located. There's Yellowstone Lake, West Thumb Lake. Norris is right about this location right here. Madison Junction is right here. Canyon Junction is right here. Old Faithful in the Upper Geyser Basin on top of the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome is right in this location right here, which is where OFW2 was located, the station I just showed. WLWY is located right here, right on the eastern edge of the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome. So if we're seeing any uplift from these two Resurgent Domes, then it would definitely show on OFW2 or WLWY. We already saw an OFW2. It is possible uplift could be starting again, but then again, it is too early to tell, and I'm not saying that for sure. It's just what I see, just basically looking at the data, guys. But let's look at WLWY, which resides right in this location right here. Again, Sour Creek Resurgent Dome, just north of Yellowstone Lake. Now, here we are again in Microsoft Excel, but with WLWY, again, UNR and A12. WLWY is at the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome, just northeast of Yellowstone Lake, but the Resurgent Dome itself is north of Yellowstone Lake. Again, WLWY showing uplift subsidence patterns from September 1st, 2018, all the way down to May 21st, 2019. So the past few days have not been added for WLWY and OFW2. LKWY at Yellowstone Lake, I'm pretty sure, is still offline. So if OFW2 goes offline, WLWY goes offline, and so does LKWY, then really there's no way in showing called Dara Wide Uplift to the public via GPS data. I'm really hoping they get that fixed soon. If it does become a problem, right now it's not a problem because there still is some recent data. If it does become a problem, I will contact Michael Poland and ask him what's up. Hopefully they get it fixed and they are out in the park. They could be replacing some of their stations because they did state they are fixing some of their GPS and seismic stations there at Yellowstone National Park. So this could just be a hiccup, but we will see where this heads. Again, for the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome, just like all the other locations of Yellowstone, we see subsidence was pretty much occurring pretty much constantly with a few large dips in subsidence here. And then it looked like it was rising a little bit right there, but that is not what I want to talk about. As of the most recent data, we see subsidence was occurring until it stopped and started to rise. That is interesting to note that that does 
correlate almost perfectly with OFW2 at the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome. Is it a coincidence? Is it possible that both Resurgent Domes are starting to see a little bit of uplift? That is possible, but then again, we don't know for sure. It is too early to tell. But both OFW2 and WLWY on both opposite sides of the caldera are showing a little bit of inflation as of the most recent data stream, possibly of the past week or two. Then again, it's a little bit too early, so I will do another update, especially if it gets worse. But right now, it's nothing to worry about too much. But we just need to keep an eye on Yellowstone, guys, and other volcanoes as well. Remember, Long Valley Super Volcano is a very dangerous threat, too. In my opinion, a little more dangerous than Yellowstone. But that's just my opinion. Here is the Old Faithful webcam. I believe this is Geyser Hill in the background. Not entirely sure. I don't know exactly where they're pointed. It looks a little dark, but oh well. So that's it right now, folks. I will be uploading another video tomorrow showing some interesting breakthroughs in the discovery of a very large submarine volcano off the coast of Mayotte, off the eastern coast of Af Africa. Excuse me. It is likely the November 11th, 2018 very low frequency VLF earthquake, a strange seismic signal called the Mayotte event that stumped even the professionals and wound around the world was caused by a large volcano that formed in just months. Although people tend to think of volcanoes forming over a very long period of time, they can form extremely fast. So Steamboat Geyser again did erupt for the 18th time of 2019, the 50th time since it reactivated in early 2018. The weekly schedule seems to be holding, so it will likely erupt again on June 3rd, 2019. West Thumb Lake also saw another interesting rapid fire swarm. No earthquakes have been reported as of yet, but they likely will be tomorrow. Please tune in for my video tomorrow, and I hope you guys had a great Memorial Day. God bless, and remember the truth is often considered hate or fear by those who hate or fear the truth. Ben Ferriolo, signing off.